Cheers! How the devil are ya? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to change an 11 kilo aluminium cylinder head from this into a pile of separated scrap just like this. Stay tuned! The victim of today's furnace melt is going to be a cylinder head off a Subaru flat four boxer engine. This is a uh, off a two litre, normally aspirated, and the thing is stuffed. It was on an engine that was severely overheated and what happens with those is the heads go soft. The aluminium loses its tension and you can never torque the things down again to properly seal. Uh, so before anybody starts telling me, you know, it could have been used and whatever, no, this thing is only good for exactly what I'm going to do with it. Scrap it. The idea here, here is that it has got a lot of metal in it as you can see it's still got the valves, the valve springs, studs and different little um, uh, plugs and things. Rather than try and pull all that out I'm just going to melt it down. The steel will uh, get left behind, the aluminium will run away and we've got something usable out of it. A couple of things here today is to uh, see how quick we can get rid of this thing. Uh, I hope to do a whole engine before long as soon as I can get one at the right time. And the other is to demonstrate a practical purpose for a 300 kilowatt burner. There's not a lot of things you can do with them, especially, you know, for home use, but this is one of them. So I'm going to put it to the test and we'll see how it goes. As you can hopefully see, the weight of that cylinder head is spot on 11 kilos. Don't know what that is in uh, funny money American pounds. I think it's about 2.2 to the kilo. But if I don't get these uh, scales back inside, my missus is going to pound on me. So we'll come back and uh, see how long it takes to melt. Okay, so I've got the burner uh, running there. It's not doing a whole lot of output, but I'm just getting it warm. Uh, I decided that I'd do this from a dead cold start. Uh, so there was no preheating of the furnace or anything just to make it as difficult as possible and eliminate any of the whinges saying oh yeah but you know you had an advantage or whatever. This will be uh, straight from dead cold so we'll see how long it takes. Now just to prove that head is dead cold I'll uh, stick my hand on it and show you that you know it's not preheated at all. I'll put the uh, elbow on the burner to direct the flame at that head. I'll come back, open it up, give it the beans, and we'll see how long it takes. As you can see, that stainless steel bowl under the uh, furnace, I hope the aluminium's going to drop down to the bottom. There's a hole in the uh, base of the furnace, and with a bit of luck, the aluminium should run out there. Uh, it might overflow that bowl, which might lead to a bit of fun and games on its own. We'll see what happens. I'm not really sure I can get full uh, heat out of the burner at the moment. I do seem to uh, have a bit of a problem with some thick fuel that's not running as uh, fast as I'd like. But I'll see if I can max the thing out anyway and we'll go from there. Hopefully this camera angle's not too close and I'm not going to have hot aluminium spitting everywhere. All part of the fun and games.
sounds like a rocket or a jet engine on takeoff. There's some real oil burning power. Let's see how long this takes. I can see the, uh, the cam guides are starting to fall over already. That didn't take long. Also, the mounting stud is glowing red. camera unfortunately the wind is blowing a lot of heat this way so I'll try and move it out of the field of fire and there she goes already clock sh 
she's gone. I was estimating about four minutes and I think that'll come pretty close. I'll throttle it back and let's have a look at what's left. Okay, well as you can see, nothing there but the metal parts, which the whole name of the game was to separate. So there's a little bit of dross there, but other than that, all I've got is a pot of molten aluminium at the, uh, at the bottom of the thing in the bowl I put there. I'll see if I can get a shot of that. There we go, should be able to see that quite easily. And you can see that would be a lot quicker than trying to separate all those different components out from the head. A nice practical use for a 300 kilowatt burner. Now as much as I hate to interfere with the process of natural selection and all the good work and for mankind that does, Here's today's safety tip for the idiots and the whingers and the whiners. If you've just melted a head down like this and you need to rebuild another one, don't reach in and grab those valves and springs while they're still red hot. You might burn your little fingers. Also, that cup of coffee that you just bought, that might be hot too. Read the directions. Hopefully, this uh, satisfies a few of you, if unfortunately it keeps you alive a bit longer. Just another service from the oil burning channel. Let's have a bit more of a look at what we ended up with. stuff is pretty well separated and as you might be able to see all our aluminium is nicely in our little pot there I'd say that's a pretty good separation job now what we're left there is a fairly man-sized aluminium ingot let's have a look Now there's some aluminium for you. If I waited about four hours I could probably get it to uh, cool down enough to weigh. But you saw this start off weight, you can see what's left. So as they say, you do the math. At this rate, I'm going to have to start going into my own scrap metal business. I'm getting more aluminium around here than what I know what to do with. Never mind, I'll figure something out. People often ask me about fuel consumption on my burners. So there's a bit of a graphic representation. I had that drum pretty full when I started off and I've probably been uh, running the thing a good 15 minutes on uh, low speed since I actually finished melting that head. I'd guess that's probably four litres or so, maybe five. Uh, that's a 25 litre drum you're looking at there. So you can get an awful lot done with uh, not much fuel consumption, even if that is a uh, concern when you're using free fuel like I am. This is vegetable oil, waste engine oil and transmission fluid all work just as good. This is going to take forever. 
Okay, I couldn't finish up this video without showing you what we ended up with and uh, doing the most dangerous part of the whole exercise. Sneaking those bathroom scales past the missus again. So, uh, at great risk to life and limb, let's see what we finished up with. Nine point eight kilos, not bad at all. So there you go, viewers. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you did and you haven't subscribed already, please do. Don't forget to click that like button. It really helps. And most of all, share these round and comment. I'll be doing uh, more of these sort of things in upcoming videos. And uh, if you've liked this one, please have a look at the other videos on my channel because there's probably going to be other things that you uh, like on there as well. Thanks very much for watching. Oi, kids, distract your mother with something for a minute, will you? I've got to sneak these bathroom scales back. God, talk about danger. You can't wear any gloves or PPE to protect you from this.